Uh, <laughs> All right, so what we, um, this is a half an hour session, so it's gonna be, um, you know, really an introduction and we'll try to get your questions answered. Um, and we had actually scheduled this before we were told not to uh, come back to campus uh, and meet uh, on campus anymore. And so this particular session was scheduled for a half an hour. And what I wanna do is talk about uh, um, Brightspace virtual classrooms and also about Zoom web conferencing. Now these are actually two different things and so when I'm referring to Brightspace virtual classrooms it's one tool it's going to be the Brightspace virtual classroom tool and when I'm referring to Zoom I'll just call it Zoom but it's Zoom web conferencing so there are there are two different things and so if you are using the tool where you go to the activities menu and then you come down here to virtual classrooms then this is the brightspace virtual classroom tool uh, zoom you'd be accessing that to through another link that's on the nav bar so are either one of you the those that are uh, on with us today or or either one one of you using the Brightspace virtual classroom or, or are you using Zoom? You have three people, Monica, Michael White, and George Knowledge. So you got three folks. Okay. All right. Okay. So to the group, are you, I'm just trying to find, figure out, is anybody using the Brightspace virtual classroom? Because if we don't have anybody on that's using Brightspace virtual classroom, then I'm just going to kind of skip over that and just go directly to zoom so if some kind of way if you can type in the chat or use your microphone to let us know well, monica have... is using zoom okay and um george is using zoom and I, uh, he sounds like he's speaking for himself i i have a question the question is uh if we use zoom don't do we also have to go into the virtual classroom for attendance to be taken no no. So these are two different tools for uh, to help you meet your class virtually. So you would not, if you're using Zoom, then you would just use Zoom to meet your class virtually. Okay. Well, I'm using. If you're using Zoom. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Then I can skip over some of these things related to um, uh -oh, to virtual virtual classroom and I'll just go directly to Zoom. And the reason I want to do that is there's some limitate, we have the free version of the virtual classroom and there are some limitations on that. And so all of these slides here are related to that. I should be able to get there rather quickly. All right. Okay. So for Zoom, this is um, Xavier's alternative to using the Brightspace virtual classroom. So I would suggest that if you are in fact, since all of you are using Zoom, that you don't use the other tool. You, you use one or the other, whichever one would meet your needs. So if you're using Zoom, then continue to use uh, Zoom. And then I would imagine that by now, if you're using it, the first thing you did to try to get started was actually to activate your account. And you went to zoom.zula.zoom.us uh, and you were able to activate your account. You should be asking your students to also go to that same URL and activate their account as well because they have a Zoom account. And when they, um, when you have a class meeting, and they join through their activated account, then you can get a record of the fact that they, uh, that particular student attended. Um, with the Zoom meeting rooms, you know, you have a meeting ID. And so anybody that has that ID can actually just join the meeting. And so if they haven't identified themselves, then you might have someone who joined the meeting and you're not, um, not clear as to who that is. We've actually had some people join our um, virtual work, <clears throat> our virtual workshop sessions, and they have some username that's um, nowhere near what their actual name is. So we have no idea who they are. So if you were in that same situation, then students uh, were not using their Xavier accounts to access this, then you would probably not know who they are either. 
Um, and if, can I, I'm sorry. Can yes, I just, jump uh, in. Quick, I just wanted to, to ask and clarify because I wasn't aware of that. So all of our students can go to that, the same process we did to activate our, our Zoom accounts that are connected to Xavier and they can have a Xavier connected uh, Zoom account. Is that correct? That is correct. That is, um, that is correct. That is my understanding. The students would go there as well and they can get a Zoom account. Right. So they would go to zula.zoom.us and then they would sign in to configure their account, set it up. All right. Good question. Thank you. All right. And so once you've activated your account to set up your meetings, you would then go into Brightspace into your course. And I'm since uh, everybody on here has done this, you've actually gone to the link in the nav bar and clicked on Zoom. I'm assuming everybody's done this, right? Is there anybody who hasn't set up, uh, hasn't used um, this Zoom link inside of your course? All right, I'm going to take that as a, there's a, no one here who has not done that. <laughs> and you schedule a new meeting. So when you click on this Zoom link, then there's a blue button here where you can schedule a new meeting. And so basically this is going to be the meetings that you want, uh, the class meetings that you're going to have with your students. And when you click on the schedule a new meeting, then you would fill out the information related to the meeting. Um, the default, uh, it defaults to the, the uh, course name here. But if it were some specific topic, then you could change that as well. Um, the description is optional. You indicate when, uh, the duration, um, of course, central time zone, but then whether or not it's a recurring meeting. If you choose this option for recurring meeting and you choose weekly, then you'll see you'll be able to select the days of the week that the course uh, meets um, and then it'll just set up a recurring meeting so that um, that'll make it easier for the students to figure out and you to figure out which of those um, meeting sessions you're supposed to be in on that particular day and time. Also on that field to set up a new meeting is this registration um, item here. I would say that you should not check this box for required registration should not be required because the students will be able to go to the Zoom link in your course and then just click on the start button to start the meeting. So there's no need for them to actually register. Now, if somebody has a different philosophy than that, than I do, then you can uh, definitely share it and why you feel like they should register. Um, you also need to indicate uh, your video options. So you would be the host of the meeting. So do you want, when you start the meeting, do you want your video to be on? And then the participants, do you want to have the participants video on when they join the meeting? So these are, you know, your own personal preferences. I would say on audio that you should choose the option for both, that they can join either with audio on their computer or they can join with telephone because sometimes they might have a problem with the audio getting through on their computer. And if so, and they have a phone, then they can just call the phone number and that should connect them through to the uh, session. They have a series of numbers, as I understand. Um, and then meeting options. So you indicate by checking the box for the various meeting options that you would want for your session. So if you want the students to, um, be able to join the session before you. So let's say the class starts at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and someone, a student tries to join at say 9.50. Do you want them to enter the session before you actually enter it if you're not in there at, at that time? So it's, it's total personal preference. I usually do not check the enable join before host. And so when this box is unchecked, they just get a message that says the host has not started the meeting yet or something like that. Do you want the students' microphones to be muted upon them entering the session? For a small class, uh, you may wanna just leave that unchecked, but if you have a large class, 
you may want to have the, the students' microphones muted when they join, and then when they are ready to speak during the session, they can unmute their uh, microphones. Um, and then there's no need really to use this personal meeting ID uh, for these class meetings, in my opinion. There is, um, for office hours, you may want to do that. And if you saw Jay's last blog post about how you can set up your office hours with this personal meeting ID, then that might be when you want to do that. Uh, do you want to enable a waiting room for the students? Um, in other words, a place that's holding them before they actually go in and then record the meeting automatically. I would say that if you want the recording to be available to the students um, after the class, then go ahead and check the box that says record the meeting automatically. That way you don't have to remember to stop and start uh, the recording. All right, and you can enter if you need any alternative, if you have any alternative hosts. Once you do that, you click on the box to save this meeting. And if it had been a recurring meeting, I would see multiple meetings in this list. Um, since I didn't say it was recurring, I said I had one meeting that was gonna be at nine o'clock. Um, and then when I'm ready to start this particular meeting, then I would just click the start button. If this were a student logging into the course to find the appropriate meeting, they would come into the course, click on the Zoom link, and then they would also see the start button where they could actually just enter the um, course. All right. Do I have any questions so far? Oh, voice of the chat, nothing? Okay. All right, and then I want to talk a little bit about the Zoom uh, meeting window because there's some uh, various things going on that you should be aware of in the Zoom meeting uh, window. And down here is where people would be able to mute and unmute themselves and start and stop their um, videos. You can actually invite a participant directly in the session. Um, also the chat here. So you'll have some students who will probably use their voice to communicate but then there may be some who will use the chat and some may have to use the chat because maybe something is wrong with their microphone. So just keep that in mind. If you're asking students to do something and you were expecting them to be able to use their voice, they may not be able to. The, uh, communicating through chat might be the only way. And here they can chat with everyone in the group or they can chat privately with someone, right? And then on the participants, um, this participants icon here, it, this number here will tell you how many participants are actually in the session. Um, so you can click on this to see who is in the meeting. It also gives you the option where you can raise, the, well, students can raise their hand and also they can rename themselves from there as well. They can also provide you with nonverbal feedback. So in the participants panel, they can, like I said here, raise your hand, or if you're asking a question, maybe it's a yes, no, they can give you some nonverbal feedback there, go faster, slower, and then more um, options. Notice here, one is um, away. You might wanna encourage them to use this one if they had to step away from the session so you're not calling on them. And then the coffee cup, meaning I need a break. So there are some nonverbal, uh, cues that are here. I would suggest um, when you're conducting a session that you do get the students actively engaged in it. And so if you're asking some questions, then ask them to go to the participant panel and maybe answer it with a yes or no using that nonverbal feedback. There's also the ability to do polling in, in here. So you'll know that the students are actually uh, in the session and engaged. Um, and then this video layout, you get to choose how you want your video laid out. So everybody has a choice. So how I decide that I wanna see the videos and how you decide might be different, but uh, you have the option. So you can switch between an active speaker view and then a gallery view. And so this is the active speaker view. If I wanted to get to gallery view, then I would just click 
this um, gallery view icon over here. Um, and then I wanted to point out on view options, when someone's sharing their screen, you can see it the original size. Um, if, if a student was sharing something and you wanted to request remote control, you could do that and they could give you control and then that way you can control their system. In other words, you'd be navigating with the mouse and clicking around. And then notice here's an option for annotate. So this one here caught a few people by surprise when they were uh, conducting their class and all of a sudden they see that students were doodling on the screen. Well, that's because there's an annotate option in here and um, they chose that. Now you can actually, if you don't want the students to be able to annotate on the screen, you can actually go in and um, in your settings and turn that option off. All right, and if you are in full screen mode, you can um, click this to enter or exit full screen mode, or you can also um, touch the escape key on the keyboard. All right, and so if you want to, and I suggest everybody do, go in and look at your Zoom account settings because the, the account settings are set by default. And so there's some things that are set that maybe you would prefer they would be different. And so if you went to um, zula.zoom.us and um, click on sign in, it should get you into the system. And then here on the left-hand side of the, that screen, you would see this settings link. And so here you would click on settings and then just go through there and look at them because that's where you would actually find, for example, the option for the uh, annotate. So if you didn't want the students to annotate on the screen, or let's say you wanted to be able to um, have the students move to breakout rooms, then you would have to turn the option on to allow for breakout rooms. Now I must admit, I've actually not tried breakout rooms with Zoom because I've not been on a session with enough people to do it. Um, but um, it should be relatively easy because once you turn it on, there's a button on that menu bar where you um, can indicate that you want to go into breakout rooms. And um, if you want to know more about breakout rooms right now, I know Jay was working with uh, some folks on that, so he might have some answers to any questions you might have about that right now. Um, okay, and so um, I have some tips and takeaways. And these are kind of a combination of the uh, virtual classroom and Zoom kind of thing. So when preparing for a um, virtual class meeting, remember you wanna keep the students engaged, right? So for your content, use visuals whenever possible, especially if you have something that's complex. Um, if you're gonna have a background template, it should be simple and avoid some gradient colors because they won't really show through. Uh, too well. We don't have anybody who's using the virtual classroom, so this one here is specifically to, to them, so we'll skip that. But um, during the session, you really do want to identify someone who could function as your voice of the chat, which Tiara is functioning as our voice of the chat today. And basically, this particular person is monitoring what's going on in the chat so that you as the host don't have to sit there and figure out what's going on in the chat that person's microphone would be unmuted and then they can just um, get your attention that there might be some questions or something, or if something comes through in the chat that they may be able to answer without even bringing it to your attention, they could do that as well. Um, the other role would be a producer. Um, and then that is someone that might be able to help others if they have technical issues. So, um, you generally in your class, you're gonna have some student who's really good at technology and um, would be willing to help. So I don't think you're gonna have a problem finding someone uh, to help fulfill those roles. So that would be my success, uh, suggestion when preparing. Um, when you actually uh, start your virtual classroom session, you wanna kick it off on the right foot. So make sure you're welcoming the participants. They're not just kind of hanging around trying to figure out what's going on. If you're doing recording, make sure that they are aware that uh, the session is being recorded. 
I like to include even a session is being recorded footnote on the bottom of my slides so that people can be reminded that yes, we are in fact uh, recording. For the very first session, do a quick introduction to uh, like Zoom and point out uh, the things that they're gonna know, a uh, need to know, like how to unmute and, and mute your microphone, um, how you can participate in the chat, how you can give me nonverbal cues. If you're planning to do polling, how that might work, um, and that step away and raise hands. So just at for the first session or maybe the first couple of us couple of sessions, go through that with the students so they can kind of get an idea of how you're going to be handling your particular um, classroom. Um, and then throughout, you can use polling that'll engage the students. You just don't want them sitting there staring at the screen while you're doing uh, whatever you're trying to do. You're going to lose them. They'll probably start checking text messages and Instagram and whatever. Um, there's a whiteboard pointer. You can point to items on uh, the content. Um, ask questions that are going to provide an opportunity for some sort of interaction. Um, and then scan the entire screen watching for the indic indicators uh, that students are having trouble. And then at the end, stop the recording and make sure everyone's exited. exited. So um, you can kick people out of the session. All right, so do we have any questions? Like I said, this was a half an hour, really quick. Um, any things that you've, um, issues or challenges you've faced so far? Yes, uh, those, those terms that you used just a second ago, uh, how do you get people to raise their hands, step away and polling? I'm not sure what polling is. Okay. So there are nonverbal cues. Um, let me try to get back to that. There are nonverbal cues that you can use, that they can use from the participants panel. So if they go to the participants panel and they see their name, mm -hmm. they would have some nonverbal cues that they could uh, do. So if you were saying something that they liked or agreed with. They can do thumbs up, thumbs down. So this is something that they would do. You would point that out that they could find that in the participants panel. When I looked at my settings for my Zoom account, um, the setting for participants to be able to provide nonverbal feedback to me was set to off. See, I not right now I see that Tierra has raised the hand. I'm not sure if you all see that. But um, mine was set that to off. And so I had to go into my settings and actually go in and say, yes, I want participants to be able to leave these nonverbal, um, use these, these various tools here. And then polling is um, a way that you can ask, um, they ask a question and maybe it has some, there's something about the lesson and then there, you have a question and there's some choices and you want the students to choose whichever one would be the correct one. You can actually set up a poll inside of Zoom and then when you're ready, um, and I guess I could have tried to do a poll today <laughs> so you can simulate it, but when you're ready, you can then display that poll to the students. They would select the right uh, the appropriate answer, whatever their answer is, and then you would get the results back and you could actually display those results to the students and then um, maybe even have a discussion about why a particular option was correct and why the other ones were not. So it's a way for them, for you to ask a question or get feedback from the students by um, setting it up through a poll. I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know. And then if you're interested in that further, we can work with you um, on that. All right, any other questions? I just, um, this is Tierra. I just wanted to add specifically to Dr. White. Um, 
for both engagement and to kind of gauge in terms of the material you're getting across. I love the yes, no buttons. It's like, let's say you have a class of 20, you're scanning, you're hoping everybody's engaged. Throw a question out there and say, you know, a yes, no question out there. And then they are forced to either say yes or no using the buttons. And you can see a couple of things. Are they understanding what I'm saying or are they even listening to what I'm saying? So it's just a good way to both engage and kind of see where your class is as a whole. Yeah, great. Great, thank you. All right, so any other questions before we were right at um, 11.30? Um, and I do have some effective practices here. This first one here has to do with the virtual classrooms tool and nobody here is actually using that. So we're just gonna skip over that. But um, attendance, so um, it's my understanding that attendance, just like attendance for online classes is um, being captured when students log into your course in Brightspace on the day and time that there's, the class would meet. So the system is automatically taking their attendance. When they join your, um, your Zoom session, then it's also going to record participants and there's a way to get a report. And I'm not certain about the circumstances around that unless Jay, you've um, got some additional information on that. But there's in your, um, when you go to zoom.zula.us, um, one of those options instead of, um, of settings is also one that said report. So you can get some reports about um, the participants or the people who participated. And I think there's some other information there as well. However, what I also suggest is that at the start of the session, go ahead and ask the students to type something in the chat just to record that they were there at the start. And then at, again, at the end of the session, so you know that when they came in and actually when they, um, when they exited the session. And you, that, you can actually save that chat information out. It would be saved on the recording. However, we recorded a workshop and I think it took maybe eight days for the system to even generate the information from the generator recording. So all that information was lost. So if you, was not lost, but it was um, hiding for a while. So I couldn't even get, we couldn't even get access to it. But if you ask the students to enter something in the chat at the start and at the end of the session, then that would be another way that you could actually capture um, the attendance. We have some um, faculty whose uh, classes are small enough that at the start, they just call roll themselves. Janice? So, yes. Just, I just learned this as being the voice of the chat. If you look at the chat box, there mm -hmm. are, I, forgot, I think Janice calls it a waffle. Mm -hmm. um, and if you drop that waffle down, it says save chat and it allows yes. you without having to wait Correct. on the video um, to yes. save just the chat that happened in the, in the session. That's correct. Yes. Uh-huh. Thank yeah, you. I like, I like the chat. I like the chat idea. Um, I hadn't thought about that, but um, again, if, if anyone's interested in learning more about the reporting functions um, that we have through through that zoola.zoom.us website. Um, again, I can talk to them uh, after the after sometime later on today, or or again, we could always kind of talk about a, a mini workshop next week for that as well. It's a nice way to just kind of pull a list of everybody who logged into your your class. Can I also add one other thing? Um, it always goes back to my set expectations. This is pretty much new to everybody: the students, the faculty, everyone. And just let students know what you're doing at the beginning. I expect at the beginning, for instance, if you do ask them to just write something in the chat, their name, for example, let them know I'm expecting you. I'm going to ask you to do this at the beginning of our session, and I'm going to ask you to do it at the end. That way, when you do it, you don't necessarily have that push. But I didn't know that I was going to be penalized for. So just mm -hmm. let students know what you're doing. Right. And at the very beginning, when you're asking them to enter something, you could even the very first time you ask, well, where are you joining us from today? Because they've gone home somewhere. So that might be a way for them to, you know, build a sense of community as well. Well, this person is closer to me or whatever. So you can ask those questions in uh, various ways to get at that information. I and I, I agree. 
Yes, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, like I see you all, should I see all 23 of my students? Would you want to? Maybe. Okay. So how would I see all of them on the screen and everything else? Um, so that, that is with those uh, layouts, right? So right now, are you seeing just one person in the video? I see four people and myself. Okay. So on the it's screen, where you see... Go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I was just going to say, I think part of it might be because since you're sharing your screen, um, when you're sharing screen, uh, Dr. White, he kind of takes over the main part of it uh, as well. So it's a little bit different when you're just in regular meetings. Okay. Yeah. Um, but still there with the, um, and that's true because you get a little um, video um, film strip maybe on the side or maybe you're only seeing, seeing one, but you get to control that because you can move that, um, those video, uh, that video layout around. And okay. so if you roll your mouse over there on the very top row, right above the very first video that's showing, you might see like a dash, um, a square, two rectangles, and then like a grid. Mm -hmm. And so if you click any one of those, it's going to actually change the layout view of the videos that you're seeing. Oh, yeah. It seems like you found it, right? Yes. Okay. And Jay's absolutely correct because I'm doing a screen share right now. You don't see everyone, but if I were to stop the screen share, then you could choose how you wanted to see those videos. So if you wanted to see all 20 some students, I'm not exactly sure how many, if there's a max on the screen, it's gotta be. Um, but the thumbnails would be very small, mm. right? Yeah. And there may be a reason why you would want to see all of them at one time or not. All right. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to wrap this up. I want to point out we do have some help resources on the cat food blog. Everybody, I'm sure, is subscribed to the cat food blog. There was one post about um, virtual class meetings. And in there, there was some links to um, how to's and helps specifically for Zoom, but also for the, uh, the other tool, but you will find some links in there for Zoom. And then um, I wanna remind you that we are updating, uh, keeping our um, wiki, our Keep Teaching Zula wiki updated, so you can also go there to find information as well that might help you, all right? And then um, I will ask um, Jay or Tiara if you have any last words for the group before we, just or if anybody has any questions, yeah. Just a reminder that um, very soon after this session is over, you will be, be receiving an evaluation. So please keep a lookout for that. It's real quick, it's electronic, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Thank you my voice of the chat <laughs> all and, right and, and 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 yeah just to just to clarify um and we're trying to do a better job of kind of making this clear on on our announcements but um the 12 o'clock session um with the same name as this is is essentially just a repeat of of what we've done here it's not like a second part or anything like that um so if, if, if you feel like you got what you needed um right now don't don't feel like you need to log in for the 12 o'clock session as well. Great. All right. So with that, if we don't have any other questions, then we'll let you guys leave the session and we'll get set up for our next